So then you, you had your first book, huge success, and then you thought, I want to do another one now. Yeah, so the second one is quite different. In many ways, it's sort of a platform for my messaging that I've been living by for a very long time and really believe in. So if there's one word that sums it up, it's sustainability. So right. I really wanted to make a book that was accessible for, you know, POVO uni students, yeah. um, families who are time poor and can't afford, you know, the fancy organic stuff, you know, yeah. from the health food shops. Um, <laughs> But I also wanted to sort of make it um, sustainable from an environmental point of view. A lot of people are very confused about the messaging. Do I buy local, organic? Do I Mm. go ethical? Do I do this vegan, rah, rah, rah? And I pull apart all of that and pull out the bits that have actually got scientific grounding to it. So I spent a year researching all of this information and speaking to the experts and looking actually at the legitimate science, not the science that's funded by, dare I say it, scientists who are funded by Coke and right. the sugar industry. And there's a lot of science in this area that is funded by the sugar industry. Wow. Not all of it's, you know, um, phony science, but unfortunately a lot of it is um, vested. Let's yeah, just call right. it that. Right. So, um, yeah, I, I sort of pull apart all the different theories and I guess I've put together a, a wellness code, mm-hmm. which is a no-brainer. It's no fads. It's basically... I mean, in some ways I feel almost guilty for this, but it's basically um, taking things back to the way our grandparents and great-grandparents used to do things. It's really simple stuff. So, for instance, I suggest eating um, chicken organic. Yeah. Chicken should be eaten organic because there's so many chemicals and hormones yes. in the non- non-organic stuff. Yeah. Um, so if you're going to invest in organic, make sure it's, you know, chicken. Yeah. Um, how do you make it economical? Because it's a lot more expensive than your standard chicken. Well, you make a big roast... You slow, you slow cook it, you know, which is going to preserve more of the enzymes. You then get the bones after everyone's eaten dinner. Mm. Don't worry about the germs. Boil them up. You then make a stock. You can then use the leftover chicken from the roast that you didn't eat, you know, if you didn't eat all of it, to make a... Um, I've got a recipe for, for a pie. I've got a recipe for a soup. Um, you then get the stock and make a bunch of other meals. Yeah, right. And it's the most nutritious thing, especially for women, is if you can cook up that, those bones for a long period of time using scraps of vegetables that you've yeah, kind of right. collected, okay. put in a freezer bag for when you're ready to make your soup. And I show how you can make 14 meals out of one chicken. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, I do a slow-cooked barbecue pork mm-hmm. and... You know, I don't use any sugar. I use a slow cooker. A slow cooker is about 40 bucks at yeah. Kmart or Target. Um, it means you can cook really cheap cuts of meat, like brisket, you know. Most people don't even know what brisket no. is. It's a really cheap cut of beef. Um, you buy all these really super cheap cuts uh, that are a third, a quarter of the price of the normal meat that people right. are eating these days. Slow cook it. And then it and just falls apart. It falls apart. Mm. And slow cooking preserves more of the enzymes. Mm. Enzymes help you break down the food a lot better. Um, it means you can throw in a whole heap of vegetables. You get even more nutrients. Nothing's wasted. Slow cookers use less electricity than any other form of cooking yeah, method. Right. You put it on in the morning. You literally dump the ingredients in, press go. Eight hours later, it's ready for you yeah. when you get home from that's work. That's my kind of cooking, for exactly. sure. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what this cookbook's about.